I'm Charles Sturgis. And I'm Will Ploughs. And welcome to episode 14 of the Drive By podcast, where we've had some fantastic racing. Before that, oh, yeah. I mentioned our mugs last time. Yeah. Matching t-shirts. I know. More to 21, you, Seb. Do, do you appreciate them? I, know I actually did. We're seven years out of date on this particular joke. Because I actually didn't know you were doing these t-shirts either, though. No, exactly. Cause it's because it's because I always just quote it around the, around the studio all the time. Do you like the Do you like the back of it though? Because uh, there you go. That's that wasn't said at the time, but we just quite liked to yeah, add that. And you can put whatever you like in where the stars are. Yes, take your pick. Yeah, sorry, I'm going too far ahead of your t-shirt. Let's go for foot one. Foot, foot one. One. Formula one. Two great races. Two great races. Monza and Mugello. Monza. Great result, really happy with that. Yeah. Great racing. You know, someone won thirty six grand on that podium. Oh, really? They got on it. A guy in Sweden put on twenty cents that it would be Gasly, um, Signs, and Stroll, really? and it came through. Oh, yes. Wouldn't it? Why, why didn't we do that? Why don't we do that? Anyway, um, yeah, great race. Yeah. That was a big old crash from Charles Leclerc, though, wasn't it? That was quite that cool. Yeah. He, he just saw he him overcook yeah, it, and they twitched much, back, hit in the, the tarmac, and just went straight to hell. A lot of stuff came out of his parabolica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got... Oh, I can't think of any. A pe- that's a pain in the parabolica. That's a real pain in the parabolica, for the mechanics, anyway. Oh, it is. Yeah, it was a fantastic result for Formula 1 in, in general. In general, yeah, for the spectators, nice see. for the whole bit. Exactly, and then I put a post up on our Instagram, if you're uh, watching, or if you're on our Instagram following, yeah, of James Hunt saying, how hard will it be, jolly hard work... Well, they topped it, Magello, I think. Uh, Magello was, I was really happy with that Grand Prix. I was looking at some of the comments on uh, YouTube. Yeah. And people were saying it was boring, but the track's quite narrow. It was quite boring in a way that it was a lot of stop start with the red flags. A lot of stop start. They and seem that to sort of thing. have that in, uh, in them at the moment. Yeah. But no, the track is quite narrow itself. So yeah, I think yeah. if you were to do that in the future, you'd see quite a lot of wheel yeah. touching action and some, some really interesting things. But. Two big crashes, two restarts, and one Did you see dull the, result. The Carlos signs um, on board footage at the oh. restart. Well, I was looking about who was to blame How for much that. Who would have come out? And they reckon it was George Russell's fault because really? he hangs back and everyone gets away. Because it was Valtteri so he, was fine, wasn't he? Valtteri was fine. He was a bit slow. But yeah. the Safety car lights went out really yeah, late, yeah, yeah. so he he didn't speed up. He was carrying on, and then George Russell fell back a Russell. bit. Russell. Russell. George Russell fell back a bit and then went, oh, quick, I'll go and catch oh, up. And everyone behind that. him went, oh, we're, we're starting. And uh, then it was amazing because Grosjean was not involved. Grosjean escaped. Crash on. Cr- Crash on. He, he was absolutely he was, fine. He was apocalyptically angry though, wasn't he? He was. And he, had, and he went off at the start as well. He was. Oh, I'll tell you something else. Oh, gosh. You, like I say, you owe me a fiver. I do owe you a fiver, but I have got no money. Oh, that's, so, yeah, that's I will give, I'll give you five pounds, I don't worry. Absolutely. Can't but, believe that I've lost an actual bet. That's why I don't bet these days. Exactly. Vettel to Aston Martin. I think it's great. Have you seen the livery they've done? Yeah. Not you didn't fun. like it, did you? It's too yellow. The yellow's too bright. Mm. I know BWT are the main I didn't sponsor. think it looked too bad. It looked all right, but it needs to be dark British racing, racing green. Without the yellow. The yellow's I think like the, the yellow still works. No, the yellow's like the modern part of Aston Martin. Isn't it with all the lines? Oh yes, it is. It? Yes, yeah. that's and the stitching why you in the get seats. That's yes, why and the it. vantage launch colour and all this yeah, stuff yeah. was that bright yellow. I saw one of them on the road the other day. It looked yeah, really yeah. good actually. And I saw one in dark blue, and that oh, looked amazing. And good, I saw one in dark red as well. I've seen loads I'm of. I'm not a big fan of dark red, apart from the Mugello dark red for Ferrari. That was a good colour. Burgundy, crap car though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was Paul, really crap. Yeah, Vettel to Aston Martin. I think that's a really good move. Really smart move. I think it's a smart move, but what do you think of Checo having to go? He's not really done much, has he? Oh, you one. see, you're changing your tune. A little bit. Yeah, you are. I, I thought you'd be a, a severe um, No, Checo I'm not. I think Hulkenberg fan. deserves more of a chance in Formula 1 Checo. Oh, okay. Checo becomes because of his bank balance, I think. He has good relations with the Vonses, but he did stay with Force India and yeah, very very was true. through very, some very really true. difficult times. Very, very, but he hasn't delivered in results so as much. No, but maybe if he Compared was in a good strong. car, but then he's had a fair crack at it, and he can produce some good results. No, he's a very consistent driver. But if what it, he is, if, yeah, it's a very consistent driver. But if it takes Vettel and the prince that is Lance Stroll yeah. to bring Aston Martin and, and fight Back into it, and bring Aston Martin into to make a properly good works mm. proper team. 
and to take the fight to Mercedes a bit, then I'm all for it. Exactly. Especially brilliant. in 2022 with the new regulation, oh, when everyone's yeah. going to be oh, competitive. Oh, sorry, with 2022, we'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. Another car I'm very looking forward to seeing is Alpine. What is this Alpine F1 they're doing now? Is so, it going to be blue? Because I've not read much about it. Well, I myself. think if you look at the car, because they do um, LMP2 racing, yeah, yeah. Um, and they've done consistently well in that. I've just, I've got. What I just don't associate. They've Alpine. been doing it for five years. They've had two European titles, two World Championships, and three class victories. So they're doing. They do pretty well. Respectable. But do you class Alpine as Formula One or rallying? Well, it's rallying, yeah, and Le Mans too. But if they're going yeah. for Alpine. The whole point of it is, well, if you look at Alpine, they sold 4,800 4, cars last year. Renault, is that all? Renault Group sold 3.8 million. Oh, so they're trying to grow it, basically. Yeah, but Renault Group encompasses lots of other brands like Ta- uh, like um, Lada, yeah. Renault Lada, and Dacia. Why can't we have Dacia F1? Could you imagine that? The Sandero F1 car. Sandero Racing. Sandero. Dust F1. Duster F1. Duster F1. I think it's a great idea. That is a fantastic idea. I think idea. it's a brilliant idea. Man, Why don't we set that up with them? What? Do, do another team? We're like the Flavio Briatore of Renault. Oh, yes, well, and we'll I'd be interested to hear what Flavio would say yeah, about that. But I think it's a, it's not a bad idea. But I think they because they, they're not ready yet. They said by 2020 they'll be title contenders. Renault did when they came. They're not back doing here. badly though. They're not doing badly, but they're not title contenders. They haven't even got no. a proper podium, really. No, true. But a fourth is their best finish, isn't it? So yeah. far with Ricciardo. But what they're doing here is, I think they're buying time because it's not very good for the Renault name. Yeah, everyone's going, buying time in Formula One at the moment. They are, but Renault are, are going. Okay, twenty twenty two will be competitive. Mm. Will be competitive. Um, but until then, they're two time world championships and they're trailing in the midfield. So I think they're going to make it Alpine. And then when the team is up to speed again, back to Renault, they'll go to like Renault Alpine F1 or something, or Alpine Renault R-A-F-1. or something. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant idea. Yeah. And I think it'll be publicity. Alpine oh, will be publicity for is. Alpine. But I reckon Alpine will become like a pole star. Or electric. It be, yeah, well, it may be electric or it'll or be like, like the sporting electric version of Renault. A bit like DS in a way. Like DS, like, Al- uh, like pole star. They're yeah, all yeah. doing it. Um, yeah, Cupra. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you actually might be onto something there. I think that might be might be what's going to happen there. But um, yeah, so I think that's about... I've covered most things. Did you know um, uh, Cupra are going into this Extreme E thing? The, Isn't it the one that Lewis Hamilton Lewis doing? Hamilton X44 is his team. Oh. So maybe he will... So he's going to be a rapper, a Formula 1 driver, and now an E Formula 1 Yeah, driver. but do you remember how Formula 1 And a fashion had... designer. Formula One had the chain as its opening by Fleetwood Mac yeah, as its yeah. opening. Dun, 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 dun. Why, I reckon. Why for, did they stop that? Uh, when Liberty bought it. Oh, is that one? Um, I think what you'll have is Extreme E will have a, a, a title sequence sung by Lewis Hamilton. What's his is XNDA his rap name? Why isn't it X44? That, like, Why no, is this Lewis it? Hamilton? <laughs> Lewis Hamilton, I've got too much time on right. my hands. Yeah, exactly. I walk in, I win a race, and then I go and hang out with, with rappers and stuff like that, and they get me in a recording studio. Exactly. I can't say his stuff is amazing, but then I'm not a massive rap fan. Really? If he was a classic... You surprised me there, Charles. If he came out as a classic rocker, oh. with with it, maybe that's what he... He grew his hair red down like that. Down there, not really cool, dreadlocks, but like... Cool rock and style Well, dreadlocks like some and... Alice Cooper, like slick hair, like had it all... Like Steven Tyler, or like that. What? You look like Steven Tyler. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and he yeah. comes out as a with like the double guitar, with like the double headed guitar. Could you really imagine him doing that? I think that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, like go full on, go full on Miley Cyrus as change your image. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, just don't get your ass out on a wrecking ball <laughs> thing. I don't want to see Lewis Hamilton's ass on a on a piece of heavy no. machinery. No, no just no, in no. the car. Well, actually, you might do, Charles. That's fine. <laughs> Lovely, right? Well, that, shall we shall we move on? That rounds off the Formula One, doesn't that it? That rounds off the Formula One. A lot more happening off field uh, in the paddock than there is inside. Yeah, with all the team changings and new drivers. I wonder if Fernando Alonso will be a fan of Alpine. We haven't mentioned Albon getting his first podium. Oh, bless! Isn't that fantastic? Oh. And have you seen his overtakes? All his overtakes were all around the outside. Really, really good. Listening to too much Eminem going around the outside. <laughs> as I've said I knew, before. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, let's round off the Formula One with that one. We'll. Pick up some motoring news. We'll pick up some motoring news. So, the motoring news this week. Go ahead, dazzle I've me. I've got some more Tesla news for you, Charles. Okay. So, you know... What's Elon of... Musk said now? <laughs> it's not Elon Musk. Sorry. Oh. Um, 
You know how car makers, they also do have like aftermarket car tuning parts. So mm-hmm. like the Fiesta has Mount Tune and Puma Speed, whatever it is, good plugs for them. Tesla now, someone in America, I think it's been established for quite a while, is doing unplugged performance for Tesla. For Teslas. So you'd think right. like performance wise to tune a car, you'd put a new exhaust on, you'd put like new air manifold, filter, air filter, yeah. You can't car. do much with a Tesla. So what they're doing, they say that the world... Put some world, double A's in the boot. They, they can't do anything, can they? So no. what these people do is they actually just put on some new suspension, new brakes, and new wheels. They say they're the world leaders in tuning Teslas when they actually don't make the Tesla go any faster. Okay. Because cool. you can't tune a battery, can you? Yeah, you can't. You can't do that at all. But they was doing some more digging on unplugged performance. And they actually have another company called... I think it's called Bulletproof Automotive. And they make some awesome Do they make cars. bulletproof cars? No, they don't make bulletproof cars, but they make really wacky cars. Well, that's that's just false advertising. Yeah, literally. But this is what this is one thing that bulletproof does. So we've got up here, it's a GT car version, road vehicle of a BMW Z4, the new one. Wow. I think it looks awesome. They should quit this unplugged performance. And just do this. And just do this. Because unplugged performance is stupid. You can't tune an electric car. Because no one can tune a battery. That is a track day car if I ever saw one. It's cool though, isn't it? That is a it track looks, day car. It looks a bit like the Project 7, I think. It does look a bit like a project. But is that based on the new BMW Z4? Yeah, the new BMW Z4. So I think it's probably awesome. Quit this unplugged performance because you can't tune a Tesla. And just put spoilers on All the they're doing cars. is putting new tyres on it, new wheels on it, and some sills on the side. And saying it's tuned. Mm-hmm, that's not Stupid, tuning yeah. if you ask me. So yeah, sorry to bore you with some Tesla news. That's fine, but I'm going to bore you with something now. Uh, a section that's becoming quite regular in the podcast called I Butcher Italian. So we've got the new Maserati oh, MC20. That's out. That's Beautiful looking Ferrari, there. that is. Lovely looking thing. Um, but we have a new car, which is... Oh, from Maserati? It's a, it's a, SUV. This is you getting your iPad out again. It is, and here's some shots of it in the wind tunnel. It's called the Grecalli. It's smaller than the Levant. Levant. Yeah. Levante. Levante. So the Grecalli. And what? I reckon that has about as much chance of seeing the light of day as it's just, just not. Maserati got their strategy all wrong with you know, Ferrari. Yeah. Back when they were doing quite badly, said, okay, we're going to stop making so many cars. And we're just going to put the price. Maserati up. Are making they've gone more. The com- they've, they've gone the complete other way and said it was wrong, what they've done. Yeah. And they've just produced loads of cars and their sales have absolutely tanked. Tanked. Because no one wants them. Because no. they're not special, are they? No, they're not so much. They're not really not. I know what you mean. But this, so there'll be a, a V6 version of this, and yeah. there will be an electric version, and all electric will Maseratis be. will be badged Folgore. Folgore. But this Grecalli means lightning. In lightning. Italian, lightning. Topical um, for an electric car. Yep, yeah, that's very true. Uh, yeah, so there'll be a V6 option, and also the new Grand Cabaret and Turismo ones, they yeah. will be the first fully electric Maseratis. No. Kind of like the idea of the Grand Have you Cabaret. ever heard of Grand Turismo? Yeah. It's one of the best sounding cars on the market. It is a very, very good sounding car, but I imagine there'll what be a, an electric version of it. And I kind of like the idea of an electric GT car like that. Wonder Rather than a stripped out electric mid engine mm. style thing. Yeah, true. But I quite like the idea of that. That like, sounds quite good because yeah. the Remax's quite small and anything else. But my only trouble is this is a great idea. Giving the Italians more electrical bits to do. That's not <laughs> perilous at all, is it? No, leave them with the uh, with the styling and put the electrics to the Germans. Styling and then give like the, the Audi to the Germans. And the Lamborghini. Exactly. And that's what Let's you need do to that. do. Um, and another bit of new car news for you oh, as well. God. This is the new... Oh, he's got his tablet out again. So joining joining the um, rental car queue with the Fit Tipo and what else do you get? <laughs> Fit Tipo. Um, Toyota, what's it called? Corolla. Corolla. Ah, oh, it's That's funny you say that. Skoda Octavia. Yeah. That is the Suzuki Swace. Swace? Swace. What a name. Swace. So that's it. That and is. it's based that's on a, a Toyota Corolla. Is it really? It's their, more of their partnership. So it will have... Wow. It's they're all very hertzy cars, but yeah, this will be a one they point. hurt your dignity. It hurts your dignity. One point eight liter four cylinder engine, lovely. <laughs> with an electric. <laughs> Tell mo- me something new. With an electric motor, the f- engine produces ninety six horsepower. The don't, electric, go, don't go too crazy. Uh, the electric motor produces seventy one horsepower. Yeah. So that's one hundred and sixty seven horsepower. Yeah. No, it's actually one hundred and twenty. They say it'll only produce one hundred and twenty horsepower. How does that work? I have no idea. Is that because like the 
electric engine needs more horsepower to run it than the actual petrol one. No idea. That's, but that's really, that's what they're really saying, anyway. stupid. Um, but that's a it's a join between Toyota and Suzuki. They've joined yeah, together yeah. to create these cars. And now we have another join. Fiat Chrysler will be joining PSA. Right. That, that we knew. Um, which the PSA doing Citroen yeah, and Peugeot yeah, yeah. and that lot and Fiat Chrysler to form a company called Stellantis oh they've made a good name out of it Latin for to brighten the stars it's, oh, oh, it's so cringeworthy it's just, it's why cringe- did they come up with such cringeworthy name car manufacturers why do you make it's the management cring- meetings going it is, through a dictionary who's got the biggest chilies bottle and who can so do the best so this company will incorporate name. here you go this is what they will incorporate Chrysler right Fiat Jeep Dodge, Maserati, Ram, Peugeot, DS, Opel, Citroen, Abarth, Alpha, Lancia, and Vauxhall. There's going to be nothing left. They're That's all going to be every single European car brand and American car brand. All of them all is just together. all together. It, it, but it'll still only be the third biggest car company in the world, which I couldn't wrap my head around. It's what? unbelievable that. Unbelievable. So they've got a lot of cars in that. But I think when you do this That's sort ridiculous. of thing, it's going to cause. Yeah. Car companies to just make they'll all be made on the same base all and the they lose their thing. identity, which is unreal. Well, that's what I was kind of going with. I won't go into it too deeply here. But you know that um, car awards that you came up with yeah. in episode twelve, I think it was, mm. where it had all different kind of categories. None of them had what was the best character for a car. Yeah. Because no car made post two thousand fifteen really has proper character anymore. Oh, that's a bold statement. But can you think of any that really that, stand that out? That is something we will do on car. another episode, I think. I think we'll that's go worthy. Through the most char- characterful cars. I will prove you wrong. Say there are loads of them. I can only think of a few off the top of my head, but I won't do yeah. now. What else have you got? Have you got something for me? I have got something for you. Something that I think we've both seen this week. Rimac oh, buying yes. Bugatti. Which is a bit of a weird one. Does that mean that Bugatti now is going to be electric? Because they've just come out with the Chevron 300, haven't they? 300 plus. Um, 300 plus. I think... There will be electric Bugattis, but I think they'll still keep some yeah. sort of Bugatti. But because they, they have to, because VW is trying to get rid of a load of their brands and consolidate it down mm. to what are they? VW, Audi, Porsche, Porsche, Lamborghini, no, not Porsche. Oh yeah, but they're trying Bentley. to get, get Bentley. Yeah, they're trying to just focus on this lot and get rid of the other stuff. That yeah, they've yeah, got. yeah. But it's interesting you say that as well because Rimac's being sold to Bugatti. Mm. No, Bugatti's being sold to Rimac. But then Porsche has a 15.5% stake in Rimac. Rimac. So does and v- Jaguar. And VW has a f- is going to up their stake with Porsche to a 49% stake in Rimac. So they're still so and, owning and each other. And VW own Bugatti. If you're going to draw a tree of how this all this works... It's a weird it's triangle really, scheme. It's, yeah, it's a pyramid isn't it? it? If you're going to draw that, it's going to be quite long and... and it's and all just tax and everything that doesn't go over our head. Completely goes over our head. I think it's being sold for about 500 million... That's not that much when you think so about it. So I was it. thinking that's the same price as a shoe on, really. Yeah, exactly. Just, or a set of I, wheels think, for a shoe Because the family own a lot of Bugatti. The original family, whose name escapes me, they own. A, they still have a majority of stake in Bugatti, yeah. So do you think on their way out, when they've sold it, they're just going to be grabbing cars? Yeah, probably. Transporter, back it up, bring them all in, go, oh, I've got right. Sharon. Got Every friends. single Plus, Veyron. Get it in. Of all Veyron, <laughs> so just whack them in. How much can you get? You know when you when you lose your job and people take computers, mm. just take a Bugatti. <laughs> Genius idea. We're, um, in, we're in the wrong game, mate. Exactly. Yeah, interesting news, that is. I interesting think. news. Uh, Ducati. No. What? The drive by podcast, not the ride by podcast. Ducati have Charles. They, they, Ducati no. No. have got a new car. Ducati, no, not a new car. <laughs> yeah, that's, it Ducati. Says enough. Sorry, that I says just, enough. Ducati have got a new bike. Um, Would you like to see it? No. Yes, you do. I don't want to see yes, it. Yes, you do. It's an electric bike. I don't like bike. motorcycles. Look, there you go. It's not. It's a bicycle. <laughs> Look, it's an electric <laughs> That's the most, bicycle. I don't even want you to show me that. Hey, look at it. It's a bicycle. It's a. It's an electric bicycle. And I think that actually looks quite cool. It's reminiscent of their... Charles, their you don't even know how to ride a bike. They don't make stabilisers for bikes your size. <laughs> so let's just... Do catch move on. stabiliser. Yes. That's a great <laughs> idea. I've got some other sad news. Oh, no. Nissan 400Z. Oh, we've got a problem with it apart from the mouth on it. Have you seen the mouth? Hey, <laughs> like that. Um, it won't be sold in Europe because of our our emissions regulations. They're not going to bother because there's no hybrid version. It's the ultimate driver's car because it has loaded three hundred plus horsepower. Yeah, rear wheel drive, manual gearbox. That's it. So they won't be selling it. So, so, not allowed so it. I will be. What are Jap Fest enthusiasts going to do? When I have no idea. Supra, they've got, but they're not going to be able to fight the Supra. So I will be leaving the Drive By podcast and importing these cars from Japan. 
That's my new business. So if you want to become a new presenter on the Drive By podcast, please do, because I'm sick of him by now. I wouldn't bother. <laughs> um, so I'll be starting pausing them from Japan. Have you got anything? What was that video thing that you pulled oh, up yes. on the laptop? Yes, I have. So you can't wait to pull it yeah, up. Pull it up. I bought it on YouTube for you earlier. J- Japan have made a flying car. You know how I've mentioned, oh God, how many podcasts ago about New Hampshire's new regulation you can't for, actually, you can't can't actually fly a car? Japanese flying car. Now, show up here. We'll show up here as well on the screen. You'll be it, saying, oh it's, my God. it's just a, it's just a what's it drone? It's got no wheels on it. No, that's and not it's a being flying flown, car. It's being that's flown on a, a helipad. Dr- Look at that. Those are flying cars. There, there are remote <laughs> control cars down there. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen? Are they remote control cars or like? I think you're getting distracted by the actual fact that that sky not a drive. Car. No, it's not. That's just flying. Yeah. That if you put a, wheels on it, that would actually be quite funky. Sort of. That's just an illegal bankruptcy waiting to happen. You'd have to is. fold the 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 oh, this double set of of thingies though of blades. Yeah. So if you folded them up and had some wheels on the bottom, it'd be sort of be like a what's that little thing? The Renault Zoe. That oh god, no, not the not Zoe. Zoe. Twizy. Yeah, Twizy. Twizy. You'd be like a Twizy, which I think is quite idea. cool, though. The Twizy. But you can't go and call that is a that's, flying car. It's actually just a, a drone that's a size. Big enough for a human in it. Yeah. And not a very much. big human. Not a very big human. It's no. actually a child's toy. It does look like a kid's yeah, toy. Yeah, that's all the news from me, because I think flying cars are so stupid, they're never going to take off. Oh, so shut just... up. You used that in one last time we did this. Okay, I've I'll got something quite entertaining again. for you. you. You might enjoy this. Is this another video we can put here? Yeah, yes. Yes, nice it one. is. Hang on. There we go. Let me just pull that up for you. This is a musket Mustang. Doing some donuts, no, doing some donuts in a car park. How cool is that? Bit of driving skill going on here. Yeah. I love a donut. Is he going to lose control? (laughs) (laughs) He just pins it into a lamppost. Oh, donuts are so much better than that. He's... I I think that's just brilliant. Oh! Oh, fantastic. I think that's hilarious. Waste of a Mustang. Waste of a admit, Mustang. But still pretty damn funny. That is so funny. He's probably on his phone trying to Instagram it at the same time as he Oh, yeah, that was that 100%. That's definitely what he's doing 100%. There. I think that's it. I think we've covered everything. Everything yeah, I think we going have. on. It's all a bit boring. boring at the moment. Everything that came out while I was looking through it was all just new car releases. Of Audi's going to America. Yeah, just Anyone it's not, not massively, not massive, well, Americans. Electric cars coming out from Kia. Although, Not having interested. said cars going to America, I reckon with that Stellantis joining mm. thing, because it's Chrysler and Fit and FCA and, and Mopar have a very big setup in America, Europe. will we get Citroen and Peugeot back into America? Because they're not there at the moment. You Aren't can't they? buy any French cars in America. Really? No, you can't really. Lovely. Shame. Anyway, so shall we move on? To Drive By Destroy? a special Drive By Destroy that I a know that one. you don't know about. Well, oh. I thought I'd just do, it, do one that you yeah. haven't seen before. Let's end the news right there then. Lovely. So what have you actually got for me this week in the Drive By Destroy? Well, I thought for Drive By Destroy this week, we would do Dakar cars. Ooh. I could have done... Is that like why you did the Instagram post earlier? Oh, you Drive see, by there po- you go. A good plug good for the plug Instagram. At Drive By Podcast. I'm getting better um, at these plugs. You are. So yeah, I thought we'd do Dakar cars, but I was like, I could do the trophy trucks and, yeah. the, and the huge lorries that do it too. But I thought I'd do classic ones to start off with. Ooh, like so, the old Porsche 959 Dakar. Funny you should mention. Really? The first one today, the Porsche 959. Oh, I've bought that already. Look at that. Yeah, oh, no. yeah <laughs> That's exactly. for sale, actually. Don't know if I'm back. But it's for sale at Joe Macari in London. Is it still? Oh, really? Um, I don't know if it's been sold. I saw it last week. In 2018, week. there was the 85 car. That was estimated at 2.5 million. Was what it? do you think it sold for? A lot. How much? 5 million. 4.6 million. Wasn't far off. No, you weren't far right there. Very, I think, very. I think the one at Joe Macari was a bit less because the whole uh, left, right-hand side had been completely taken away oh, really? from the Dakar. Oh, really? I think it's quite good they left it in like. Oh, you've got to condition. leave it in proper proper space, but that yeah. just looks so that's, cool. Doesn't that's it? actually on our Instagram page. It is, um, but it's uh, that was meant to be a Group B rallier. Did you know that? No, they designed that. I didn't to know be that. Group B, and then well, what, the a nine five nine, the original car, yeah, which was based on the nine eleven, and then they did the nine five. I thought the nine five nine was meant to be based on the. F forty, no, no, the night. Well, it was due to the road versions took was oh, comparative yeah, sorry. to the F forty, but the original Porsche project that became the rally yeah. uh, Dakar one was originally a rally one, so Group B rally, but then it took too long and Group B ended. 
Two hundred were made for production, like you had to for yeah, yeah, yeah. regulations, but you didn't need to do that for, Dakar. for the Dakar. Really? So you were all right, yeah. But that's that just an awesome looking thing. Anyway. Air cooled flat flat six, three hundred horsepower, fantastic. In nine, this is a nineteen eighty six car. Um, who do you think Formula One driver who raced? Who came second? Was it Fernando Alonso? No, it was nineteen eighty six. Oh, sorry. <laughs> was it making... No, no. Jackie X. Speak... Drove that and came second. Was it they Jackie came X? first, second, and sixth. Yeah. Why did I say Fernando Alonso? I don't know. It's probably because you put Fernando oh, Alonso up. Oh, because I put playing. Fernando Alonso up earlier. And Jackie X was still racing in 1986. Hey, he was in the Dakar, yeah. He did the Dakar. He did it. How old he is he now? He did it two or three years on the trot. God, he must be so old. He now. must be quite old. What he's is still that? Still alive. Yeah, he's still alive. He's still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's one of the few from the 1970s now that yeah, that's still, still, going. still kicking. Uh, next up, we have the 1981 Rolls Royce Corniche one. Yep. That did not take place. It was place a bit of a Dakar. goof. It was a bit of a goof, really. Um, polyester body shell. Oh. So it's all sort of one piece light. of polyester. Very, very light. Um, it was disqualified because the steering axle broke. I can think of many reasons why that would be disqualified. Oh, yeah, that's true. Mostly because you get your man to drive it for you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. You sit in the back of yeah. the Dakar. You actually get this you... random rich Joe come and just. Joe Bloggs comes along and, and he just kind of sits in the yeah, back. Yeah, so I put Fernando Alonso in the front, so it's fine. It's Fernando Alonso <laughs> again. Um, it, they, they took the engine out, threw it away, and put a 5.7 litre Chevy V8 in it. It has the oh. axles, the axles from a Land Cruiser, and the transmission from a Land Cruiser. Rolls Royce should do that instead of the new seductive ghost, shouldn't they? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's what they should that do. That is properly If cool. you're wondering what Jules was, it was one well, of their title sponsors was Christian Dior, their new fragrance at the time. Really? How cool is that? That. Do you wear Dior? No. <laughs> you shot me the man who wears Dior. Mm, not especially. My <laughs> name's Jules. But anyway, that was the fragrance at the time. That car was sold for two hundred thousand pounds recently. So I'd rather have, I'd rather have that than the nine five nine myself. I think I would as well. But then again, the Rothmans colours on the nine five nine. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Absolutely incredible. So, and the last one we have. Is that that is the first car to ever win the Dakar two door Range Rover bought second hand in France and the only thing they did was it put three racing seats in it um, an extra fuel tank a winch that they said was never used they never bother using the winch it had the standard engine the whole bit can you do that to your three door Range Rover that is awesome oh yeah it's that is it's honestly the idea. coolest thing I've so ever seen so out of 182 cars it came fourth but first in the car set yeah yeah. yeah. Um, but they say it won because the chap who owned it was called, oh, this is where I butcher French too, Alain Prost. Gestier. G E N E S T I E R. Letters. Yeah, he had very good knowledge of Africa because he, he'd done the journey before. I, so I started Googling That's about a the Dakar. really tough drive by destroy this week. Yeah, but I started looking at why the Dakar came about. Do you not have it's any idea why? Race, isn't it? Well, it was Paris to Dakar. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was a chap called Thierry Sabrine. Uh, he was a mo French motorcycle racer and car racer yeah. and rallyer. Uh, and he got lost doing a th uh, doing the Ab Abidjan to Nice run. You've tuned into Drive By History. You've tuned into Drive By Pronunciation. He got lost for three days and nights in the desert. Really? And while he was driving, has he taken, again, has he taken uh, inspiration from the Bible? Yes, yeah, he actually got lost for 30, 40 days and 40 nights in the um, desert and went, really? it's not a bad place for, for my own race. And then he set it up and that's how it came about. That's back. awesome. But what would you do out of those? Out of the Range Rover, the 959, and it's really difficult. This is really tough. Really difficult. Because the first thing that springs to mind is the destroy car. Okay, I'm going to, um, des I'm going going to, to destroy, destroy the, the nine. What? Oh! The 959? No way. I am. Are you joking? I'm going to destroy the 959. Why? Because it's just not as good as the other ones. Really? No, I don't think it is. Ooh. Controversial opinion right now. Um, I just don't think the 959 is as cool as the other ones. I say cool a lot, actually, in Drive By Destroy, but yeah, that mm. is... Well, that's basically what we're, what we're basing our on. ones on, and the driving I think, experience. So, okay, I'll, I'm destroying the 959. I'll give my reasoning for it now. Sorry. The Range Rover, you say, was the first one to win first of its one class. To win of, yeah, of any car, the first Dakar winner. Uh, so I'm buying that. Really? I'm buying the Range Rover, just because of the history that goes with it. Fair enough. One of my all-time favourite cars. I have to admit, I do like your three-door Range Rover quite a bit. Um, which is really, really a pain for me to say. I think that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. 
And this is the, uh, this is the whole history behind it being yeah, the first winner. Enough. Three seats, extra room for the pub. Extra good pub cup. Extra fuel tank as well. Extra fuel tank. So yeah. you do a few trips to the pub. Oh, exactly. And have good conversation at the pub. Exactly. So that And people wouldn't think that you're a nonce for driving it, so it's fine. Okay, fair enough. And then I was therefore be driving the Corniche. Because I'd love to go through the high street. It's like, this is my Corniche. Oh, absolutely. Proper light. So you've got your Corniche, oh. which is the last word in Rolls-Royce yes. luxury. Yeah. But I've got the wheels. Put some big strapping Goodyear tyres on it. Lifted up. <laughs> you're taking away all Roof the beautiful rack. engineering and yep. design. Chevy V8. And put poly, poly, what was it called? Polyester. Polyester. No, what polyester. was it? What was it made out of? Polyester. Yeah, it was polyester. Really? Yeah, it was a polyester body shell. It was the eighties. Oh, Everything was every, polyester. Yeah, Hair, the 80s. suits, people, people, the share. So it was the, it was the end of the seventies, early yeah. Um, yeah, that's what so I've been doing. That's obviously I've been. You're destroying. I'm the destroying the nine five nine. Controversial opinion there. Very, very controversial. Because I do love that car. It is a great car. But now you've swayed me with the Range Rover. Oh, so really? I would be buying that and I'll be driving the Corniche. Driving the Corniche. I would be going driving. You can pro- have a, What would you think I'm going to do? Well, at your reaction to the 959, mm. I reckon you'll be destroying the Corniche, buying the, ra- not buying the 959 and driving the Range Rover. You would be wrong. Really? I will be driving the 959. Really? Driving the 959. Because it's four wheel drive, it's huge. It's got. It's just looks It looks awesome. Awesome. Now I've just changed my mind. No, you have. You agree with me now. No, I'm going to buy the 959. That I want that as my daily driver. With the Rothmans colours on the side, the blue You're and the, the gold. Uh, yeah. The first ever Dakar winner. I know that, I know that. I will be driving the... Buying the 959, I will be driving the Corniche, and yeah. I will be getting rid of the Range Rover. It's How much does that Rover, pain you to say? It is. It's a bit. It's a bit painful. The story to say behind that, that Range Rover. He said it was a fir- bought by a French bloke in. It was a second hand car. Second hand car, and it won Dakar. And then won the Dakar. Oh, I see. That's it. a tough yeah, one. That is. I might do modern Dakars for the next one because it's really difficult because they're all so cool. They are. I Did Lance Strauss ever do a Dakar? Do you know what? I don't know, but I don't think so. Really? Not, like, not to my cool knowledge. One, it? it would be a cool one. Because they did a tour through the Serengeti National Park mm. in Atlantis Rathos. The 2020 Dakar's just finished. First one they've ever done in Saudi Arabia. Really? Mm. They they were doing it there and then there was issues in Senegal. Oh, right. Security so. issues. So, and that ran till about 2002, they did it to the Dakar. Or something in the early 2000s. Really? Um, I'm really surprised with your choice. So I thought buying, you were driving the 959. Buying the 959 because what a car. What a car. A pub car. Awesome pub car. Would you buy it with the half the right hand side stripped away as well? Uh, no, I'd probably put it back to looking relatively Would you? good. Yeah. You'd bodge it back. I'd bodge it yeah. back, but try and keep as much as it original as yeah. possible. Um, and then I'd, I'd be driving the Corniche because that was quite then. cool. Yeah, true. But I would be getting rid of the Range Rover because at the end of the day, it may have won the Dakar, but it, it was start. just a Range Rover. And it, <laughs> it won't start. start. It it's a 1979 start. Range Rover. I want to live my well, life 78, on the edge. Yeah? Yeah, so I don't know if my car's going to start, so I can't go to work. I was just blame on the car. Fair enough. But the, the, the Range Rover, the two-door that I smoke around in, that's driving really well at the moment. Apart from when I have to sit on, on the driveway and just... Leak oil on my drive. I le- like leaked some oil on the drive, I will admit. Stayed and here for an hour and a half. It was because it was really hot. She doesn't like running in the heat. She has to be parked in the shade she does under the tree on the drive. The shade, otherwise she won't start. Yeah. But other than that, she's an absolute beauty. So it's a good character. But I know the Range Rover, so I think it'd be 959 I'd be taking home. Just have it in the garage. Just like, You know when they have those really modern mm. houses where you have you drive your car into like your living area? That's the car that I put in my living area really? of like one of these really modern I Scandinavian think, houses. I think the Range Rover might be more of a talking point. Yeah. And Probably. you can't exactly miss it, can you? No, that's <laughs> true. But I think the 959 is just awesome with those wheels. But mm. it's a really difficult decision between that and the Corniche. But there we go, I've made it, I've gone with the 959. Wow. Did you like that one? I did like that one. That, that was really the tough one. one. That's the toughest one since James Hunt's Formula One car. Mm. Really, very is. Much so. very really is. We've also got a lot of movie cars on the front this week. I think they're all movie Christine, cars. Christine, Bullet, Starsky and Hutch, and the XKR. Dying of the Day. Dying of the Day. What a car that was. 
That is an awesome looking car. I, I want a uh, what's it called gun? Gatling gun, Gatling gun. on the roof. From that's the back. brilliant. Yeah, that's awesome. But there you go. That's every four year olds. I've, I've had that for <laughs> years. I've had that since I was a kid. It's got no wing mirrors. It's on. got no wing mirrors on it. <laughs> I obviously played with it. I'm surprised the gun's still attached. With it. You know when you had the. I bet, DB... you, I bet you used to make the noises of that thing, didn't you, all the time? Oh yeah, but yeah, just walking around, not with it around me. Everyone <laughs> mad. But you know how you have the DB5 and it yeah. shot things out. Oh, the, the the little man goes and gets sucked up by the Hoover. Yeah, yeah. I had the the um, BMW from uh, which one is it? Tomorrow Never Dies, and that had rockets in the in the roof, didn't it? Because they come up. Now you've joined the Memoirs and, of the Drive By Podcast. And now and they just disappear almost immediately as soon as I got no, the car. Yeah, they like, they, they all disappeared, yeah. and that was the end of that. <laughs> but they were really cool. But anyway, thank you very much for tuning in to the Drive By Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I've and really enjoyed this week. Oh, it was a good one. Really enjoyed um, it. And we've got better lighting in here. That's probably why we all look so pale. Yeah, we've made an investment. We really have. We're, we're, we're committed to bringing you high quality content. Sometimes. But speaking of high quality <laughs> content, check me out at Charlie Drives on Instagram and him at us. Drive by us at Drive by Podcast, Podcast with the mug. Um, yep. Give us a follow. More stuff to come. And we will see you all again next week. We will do. Cheerio. Bye bye.